help you because I would have been too busy on the ground laughing. You would, you would have been laughing because Creed was like, <laughs> Dad, how, how many times can you get this thing stuck? I mean, there's not that much mud out there, but I did. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna be doing any cameos for John Deere's commercials anytime soon. <laughs> Sorry, John Deere. Uh, so if any of you farmers out there can please assist Dave in this, we'd greatly appreciate it. Yes, yeah, I, I need massive help, massive help. But there was yep. one silver lining uh, that came out of this is I needed Creed's help to get me out of this every time. So he learned how to drive the gator and he was forced to learn him. how to drive the tractor. So now I can't get him off the gator now. He drives the well, gator Well, if, if the gator's missing at 2 a.m., we know who took it. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh no! Yep, he 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 literally afterwards was like, "Well, this is easier than I thought to drive. This is this is pretty cool." So, I said, "Now you can burn trash all the time. We don't have to worry about the trash piling up. You you know how to drive the gator. Go out back and 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 burn. burn. That was part of his job is to burn the boxes. So okay. if you see a torch fire going on, that that's probably him back there <laughs> <laughs> on the gator. As long as he doesn't burn the gator up." <laughs> Created his pyrotechnics. Yep. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yep. So, mm -hmm. the blessing came out of that. He actually took Judah down on the track on the gator to our pond. You know, uh, uh, Chris said that's what we call it our lake. Called, it's called Boston Lake. Remember when Chris said that's not a lake, that's a pond. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yep. Chris. Yep. That was his response. Yes, it was. Well, he Creed took Judah there, and Judah was running with the geese and. Had a, had a great time, so it was good for him. Speaking of, of family members, I sent this picture to you afterwards. I want to show everybody this. Um, Alan's here, and Alan had some kind of uh, something from um, coming back from South Carolina. We got, we got a little bit of it, and that's why it's in my eyes. I'm working through it. I'm, uh, and it could have been out there in the field, too. Plus, who knows? Mm -hmm. But here's our newest members to the, tri the, the, the Judah tribe. Uh, Ruth had 10 babies. And there they Ten were. Ten babies. Ten babies. You know, that's and, massive. And Ruth and Boaz make 12. So you've got 12 total, which the t 12 tribes of Israel. So this is interesting. Um, congratulations to Ruth and Boaz. That's you, adorable. You know what makes it even more interesting? Is, what? You know, we named these these ducks Ruth and Boaz. And Ruth and Boaz, they must have had ducks last year, or babies, and I didn't, I missed it because that's why they're here again. Um, she's so protective. What a great mother uh, Ruth mm -hmm. is. Anyway, there's 10 of them. If you go to the book of Ruth, there's a genealogy at the end of the book of Ruth from Boaz to King David, exactly 10 generations. That's hysterical. Isn't that amazing? That is amazing. Yep. Because wow. in, in, the, in the law, in the, in, in, in the, in the Old Testament, if, if there was a illegitimate birth, which Boaz or uh, Perez was an illegitimate birth, you, you had 10 generations before... Uh, that that was out of uh, out of the tribe. So it was exactly ten generations from from uh, per Perez, which means breach, uh, to mm -hmm. King David, to be king. Mm. Isn't that amazing? It is. God works in See? numbers and signs and symbols. And he works through <clears throat> animals a lot. He yeah. he he, sh he shows you many things and teaches you many things through them that people miss. Yeah. Yep. In life. <laughs> like me. I got so frustrated at one point on Saturday. I'm like, what am I doing out here with this getting stuck again? And I just took a deep breath and looked up and, you know, gave glory to God. And all of a sudden, two cardinals come by. I was like, mm -hmm. thank you, Lord. I, I needed that shalom at this point in time. And you just got to laugh. I mean, go for a record. How many times can you get a tractor stuck in one day? Uh, I broke it. I broke the record. And if we were there, you know what Chris would be doing? He'd be kicking you off the tractor and saying, just let me do it. That's what Chris would have done. He yep. would have kicked you off and yep. evicted you from your own tractor, and yep. he would have been doing the work. I should have been evicted. I mean, 10 <laughs> times, come on. <laughs> but it's plowed. It's finished. I did it. Uh, now I got to figure out how to rototiller it and uh, plant plant corn or whatever we're going to plant. So you inspired me with your garden. Well, thank you. Yep, yeah. that's just the beginning. Now, the funny part about my garden is I went out, right? And the other three ones that I didn't show you, the three raised beds, filled with weeds. So I go back to Chris and I go, Chris, I thought you planted seeds in these beds. He goes, I did. And he shows me he's got hiding in the corner there in the crack, like the, the package of what he planted. <laughs> I said, Chris, how am I going to tell now? What's what? You've got weeds going everywhere. You're not weeding it at all. And he's like, well, I didn't know. And so basically now I have to try to figure out what's what in, the, in these, these three raised beds. Mm -hmm. how, do you get, how do you keep the deer away? 
Well, interestingly enough, you, there, there are a few uh, tricks to keep deer away. Um, there are some organic sprays you can use that won't hurt them. They just don't like the smell of it. You can put up uh, through chicken wire, just yeah. a small perimeter fence. You can also give the deer something that is more palatable to them than vegetables. And, and deer happen to love crack corn. Yep, that's why I got out back. So if they know it's there, they have a tendency to go for that and to leave your garden alone. This is how ridiculous I looked uh, on Saturday, on Sunday. I think the deer were watching me from the woods because I went out and burned <laughs> some stuff on the gator on Sunday. Because when it gets nice, I like to get out and just breathe in the air and get on the tractor and forget about things. And, and so I'm out there on the gator and I saw about 50 deer just watching me like, oh, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> Even the deer laughed at me. Oh, well. <laughs> it's the effort, right? I'm trying to be a farmer. John Deere, if you're watching, we need help. <laughs> you know what was beautiful? And I think that's probably part of the reason my eyes are the way they are. Maybe because of the allergies. But when I, when, I was, when I was mowing that down, it, it reminded me of my uncle. We, li we were raised on a farm. And he used to, he had like 100, 100 uh, cows, so he would do the alfalfa every year. And it smelled like freshly cut alfalfa. And I was like, I remember this. New sanctuary that we're going to build. And thank God, cable is going to be done by May 31st. What is today? Oh, you got eight days. Yep. Eight days. Within that amount of time, everything will be done, including it in the house. So basically everything. Mm -hmm. um, but um, we want to create a field to grow our own hay. Yeah. So we're going to do that. That's a great We're going to create a field. We're Charlotte, our horses right now yep. um, at the farm in New Paltz. They, you got to see the massive field of hay they have that they make. And then they have this enormous storage area where they store these huge round bales mm -hmm. in it. So it's so kind of cool. So if you get the round ones, and then Chris is going to need a new tractor. Oh, please. You know what, what Mary did? Mary went and uh, opened up her big garage and showed Chris her giant Ford tractor and oh. all these other enormous tools that she's got and equipment. And Chris was just absolutely loving it. And he looked at me and said, I need this. <laughs> <laughs> I said, of course you do. Because when Chris wants something, it's not small. It's not like he wants a pack of socks. When Chris wants something, it's a lot of money. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. you look at the breaking news and all the stuff that's going on today. I mean, there's so much breaking news going on today. It's like yep. bang, 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 bang. A lot yes. of it's around the economy. Uh, we have to grow our own food. Uh, I, I, was, I wrote some notes down before Grace and Glory just on breaking news. They believe that there's only a 10, week, uh, 10 weeks left of the global wheat supply. That's all we have left. Uh, 9 .2, about 9.3% of the world's corn is from Ukraine. Um, then, uh, but but well, there was one positive thing, if you want to look at it positively. A military plane just landed with 78,000 pounds of baby formula. Oh, praise God. Yeah, but why does it okay. take the military to do that? Um, that should never happen. I saw somebody, actually it was a general that I know, um, not in the United States, uh, Canada, say, uh, sent me a picture of shelves. I don't know why he got in Canada, but it was in Mexico. The baby formula in Mexico, the shelves were full. Of course they are. So there's a huge, huge problem here with them intentionally disrupting the supply. Don't you find it interesting that suddenly the supply of baby formula goes in the middle of this whole Roe versus Wade, what's going on? Yep. Being overturned. I don't think that's coincidental no. one bit. No. So uh, that, speaking of Roe versus Wade, it's what, 2 o'clock Eastern. Uh, I was told, look out, it could happen as soon as today, an announcement. But I, I, I think we would have heard something maybe by now. Mm -hmm. uh, unless they're going to try to run it under the radar. But I would I would anticipate that they announce something before Memorial Day weekend. Yeah. So look for that. And as we talked about on Friday, uh, they, they, I heard a counter move. I don't know if I mentioned this on Friday, too. Watch Georgia. Uh, a really, 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 really good source in Georgia says there's a lawsuit going on in Georgia that's flying under the radar that could flip and be one of the first states to flip. Uh, Back to the dream I had December of 2020. It was 10 days before January 6th. Mm -hmm. I was sitting in sort of a restaurant or maybe a hotel lobby overlooking a city. I believe that now to be Washington, D.C. Uh, and all of a sudden, I hear 
two states mentioned, Georgia and Pennsylvania, in that order. Wow. And this weird black military-looking phone appears in my hand. And a voice yelled, call the Capitol, and I woke up. And that was 10 days before January 6th, that dream. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, you were with me on January 6th. Yes. Do you remember when we went back and we were watching the uh, the runoff of the Senate and we're leading? I said, watch, at the last minute, you're going to in Georgia, that runoff. Sure enough, they did. Um, mm -hmm. I went to see, uh, for, for, went to a movie theater. First time in, I don't even know how long I've been in a movie theater. But we, the four of us, went to see um, 2,000 Mules on Saturday. Saturday or Sunday? Saturday. How was it? It was, I, I knew most of the stuff in the movie. Uh, but it's still mind-blowing. It is absolutely mind-blowing. Anybody with any common sense, uh, we're going to put it all together and say, here it is. Here is the proof. And they, even in, at a high bar, um, as far as the data, if they took that geofencing down. And that geofencing is real stuff because uh, I don't know if I mentioned this on Grace and Glory, but when I was in the corporate world, when I was with Vodafone, I could sit at my computer and I could, as long as I had an EIN number or a mobile number, I could track anybody anywhere on that network to the closest within a mile of that of that tower. Well, you know, technology since 1998 has gotten better and better. So they know to the precise spot we are, even with your phone off. Well, they do. That's why the OnStar system is in all the GMC um, trucks and cars. OnStar, OnStar can not only with precision pinpoint exactly where you are, they can unlock your doors via satellite. Yeah. It's yeah, weird stuff. Yes, before I got in the ministry, I, I had an Escalade. And it was a beautiful Escalade. But there were so many uh, bells and whistles on the Escalade. Nothing ever worked. I was always f trying to fix the, the, the head OnStar on there because we locked our we got locked out of the, that one time. That was handy to have, but uh, they they do watch us. Um, so back to that movie, the 2000. It's unequivocal uh, proof that Dinesh D'Souza. We're look, we're gonna get his, uh, him on his glory. Um, that there's no ifs, ands, or buts. He proves about what Mike Lindell and Sidney Paul and all of them. Weekend. Uh, I think we mentioned this on Friday. It was breaking news in Yuma. Uh, Arizona, that is where one of the blacked out uh, faces of the whistleblower and 2,000 mules came forward and said that there was uh, 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 fraud in Yuma. The sheriff got bold and was looking into it. Carrie Lake, who's running for governor of Ar Ar Arkansas, uh, Arizona, um, who we've, we've had on, she said that they were investigating the nonprofits over the weekend. So again, for those people who think nothing's happening, 2,000 mules in my humble opinion, I believe, is the, 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 the tip of the iceberg. This is going to open everything out. It's just going to mm -hmm. start spilling out now, and there's nothing they're going to be able to do to stop it. Well, this is where the Titanic is now taking on water. Yep. And starting to sink for them. The, the, now we're at this point now. And the screaming and the panicking, a lot of desperate maneuvers on their part that's going to happen in the coming weeks, yep. I think, in the coming months, you know, out of just sheer desperation, they're going to do it. And they're going, so, they're, they're still going after the grid. I was given, um, I was given a U.S. grid uh, alert over the weekend by one of my sources, and it shows the areas in the United States who are mo most vulnerable for a blackout or a brownout. Um, they're ready to t try to do everything they can to pull the trigger and be in brownout or blackouts. Mm -hmm. So hang on. And then we have the monkey pox that, that is it, it going viral as well. So why don't we back that up? Because let's, since we're talking about the 2000 meals, let's talk about what, what you brought to my attention because I was, I was too busy getting stuck over the weekend. I forgot about the, the horse race. Do we have that? We can pull up the Amanda to talk about the winner of uh, the horse race over the weekend. There it is. <laughs> you cannot make <laughs> this stuff up. People, there is prophetic, there is a prophetic landscape and picture between last year's Triple Crown and this year's, especially. And so early voting <laughs> won the Preakness. <laughs> and Epicenter, now, okay, so we have, to, we have to set the stage a little bit for early voting and why this happened. Rich Strike, who won the Derby and came out of nowhere at 80 to 1 odds, was pulled from this race for health reasons wow. and to preserve the health of the horse. Now, remember I said this, what's coming up politically, just mm -hmm. remember this. Okay, just remember, okay. So, 
Epicenter is in this race also. Epicenter comes in second again. And the fifth horse in the fifth month. He was the number five horse in the Preakness. He won in the fifth month. Think about that one. That means grace is coming. Yeah, isn't it amazing? So I, I looked at this. I said, you cannot make this up. This is so wild what's happening with these races. And the, the early voting ties into the problem of the 2,000 mules. They absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. This is prophetically as pointing most definitely at what, you know, what is coming, what may be overturned, what happened. So, yes, this is establishing that. Yeah, it's, I, is it today or tomorrow that the, 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 the Georgia uh, primary is? I think, it, I think it's tomorrow. Um, but watch, I'm told, watch Georgia. There's a lawsuit that is going to be big. And now we want to watch uh, what's going on in Arizona on the tweet of Carrie Lake. And then another source told me in this movie, I don't, I don't even know the name of the nonprofits that, that, that are part of this, but they're investigating mm -hmm. them. And I was also told that, remember, if you watch 2,000 Mules, if you haven't seen mm -hmm. it, you got to go see it because it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's so important. It's, tell your friends, tell your friends, and they're both part of it. Uh, but th they have all the data of these people. They know who they are. They know who these mules are. They have their cell phone, and in a lot of cases, they have their, their the video of these people. So they're going to start investigating these people, and I'm told they're flipping left and right. So mm -hmm. a lot is going to come out. It is. And, um, you know, when you have the rumblings and you have these little tremors before the enormous earthquake comes. There it is. You go ahead and put that up. That's what I was mm -hmm. referring to. Uh, they, they're singing, or they sang. So somebody else told me it's even deeper than that um, over yep. the weekend. This is the tremors before the enormous 9.0 earthquake. All of what you're seeing now is all that seismic activity that's going on that's beginning to shift the plates before the enormous one. Yep. This, is, this is why we're seeing this, so yes. Yep, oh boy, oh boy. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's, it's, it's big. Uh, let's talk about the economy just a little bit, and then we can go into what you want to talk about. Oh, well, well hold on, the monkeypox. Uh, Dr. Bartlett was way ahead of the curve on this monkeypox. He was, yep. He spoke to both of us about it, and yes. And I got a document. Why don't we put that document up? Uh, this is a document that was given to me. Uh, this was actually, uh, when did they do this? Uh, I think it was... Over a year and a half ago, this monkey pox was planned. And they show the exact dates that they were going to do these tests and these targets, and it happened exactly the release of the monkey pox. Mm -hmm. They knew. They knew. Oh, I sent that to you, to, a copy of that to you over the weekend, uh, to Dr. Bartlett, too. Yes. Yep. This is the anti this is probably potentially the we're going to release, yep. that this was going to be it. So, yeah. There, d d Dr. Bartlett gave us a solution. Uh, we'll we'll get did. that out on Friday. I don't remember what it was. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what 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 it, it was? It's something he spoke to me about it. But yes, we can get from him. Okay, you we'll, know, we'll, we'll, a suggest a suggestion of where to go. Maybe yes. we'll have him call in on Friday just to kind of tell everybody not to fear. Oh, you want to hear the latest too? This is hysterical with Dr. Bartlett because I spoke to him last night. You know, there is a Hungarian side to my family that most likely where the Jewish you know side potentially came from. And Dr. Bartlett has a Hungarian side. So he's Jewish. And he, and he thinks more and more that we're distant cousins. <laughs> I would not so be surprised. He said to me, I should come on Grace and Glory and we should play the All in the Family theme song. Because <laughs> <laughs> we're truly all in the family. Um, yes. You know, so people always, funny. there got so many people at me. Why do you always say you're from the tribe of Judah? Because I'm told to say that. And some people don't know. There's new followers that come on. But it doesn't matter whether you're from the tribe of Judah, from the tribe of Le Levite, or no tribe at all. Scientists have proven, scientists, not the Bible has always told us, but scientists mm -hmm. have told us that we go back to one set of two sets, all truly family. That's true. Yep. That's very true. So, um, so West economy going into the recession, that was today. Uh, and we talked about the 10 week supply of wheat. If you, if, if you don't have food, st store up, get a backup generator, uh, be, 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 be proactive. As, uh, I don't think she's coming. Um, U.S. Special Forces are looking at moving into potentially Kyiv. Uh, UN, UN Ambassador of the United States just said that a global food shortage, a storage uh, shortage, United States would back Taiwan. China got upset, and then the White House 
walk back his statements. Of course. You can't, of course you can't even did. screw up intentionally that many times. Uh, you know, it's interesting he's in Japan, too, because Japan and China don't necessarily get along all the time. Not at all. Yeah. So that's interesting that he's over there and he's making that statement in close proximity to being in Japan. Yep. So the other one to watch out for is India, India, uh, with all of this, that they were going to make, what was it? A shrewd maneuver. There was going to be some sort of maneuver they made. Hmm. Um, I'll have to find the word because the Lord spoke a, a bit about India. Uh, I don't know, maybe it was three or four months ago. Mm hmm. All right, so, so one last thing before we take a break, and then we'll come back and we'll talk more about your prophetic words from Friday or whatever's on your mm -hmm. heart. Uh, many people were, we, we, we gave you the capital switchboard number on Friday. So many people were concerned about that, which you should be concerned about. It's unconstitutional. I have learned over the weekend that there is this big law firm uh, <gasps> that is fighting them back, suing them. And 12 out of the 13 amendments have been removed from consideration over the weekend. When we come back from break, I'm going to read you this from June 16, 2020. Your jaw is going to drop. Okay, June 16th, what, 2020? Yep. Okay, 2020. All right, again, 12 out of the 13 amendments have been removed from the consideration. So we're not out of the woods yet, but we keep we got to keep fighting. That's why we, the people... You can't say, woe is me, and under, there, nothing's getting done. We, the people, are, are causing these things to go, go backwards. Well, God is causing it, but we have to be active with him to do that. This, this is results for people stepping up. All right, right. Um, let's take a quick break and be right back after well, The Bethlehem store, Amanda and I and Chris and Christine, my wife, and Cree will be, uh, Vicky's going with us. Um, mm -hmm. so, uh uh, Joe and Julie Antis are going with us. So uh, Lori Gregory is going to go with us to our trip in January. Yes. Or not January. Well, I keep saying January. November. Um, and we're gonna, you're going to meet some of the generals and the colonels from Israel. And they'll tell you why they want me to keep saying you're Jewish. You can ask them face to face. I will ask them directly. And we are also going to do at the Bethlehem store, Super Market Sweep. Bethlehem store edition. <laughs> You're going to love this store. You're going to love this store. So for the people who are not going, because it, it literally sold out in like two days, the trip to Israel in, in um, almost said January again, November. Mm -hmm. So the second tour is up. Uh, we'll be going from February 13th to the 23rd uh, to the tour of the Holy Land, and we'll get that up to 200 people. Um, I have to have a call with my folks in Israel to figure out how we're going to, but we'll, we'll make it work. We're going to cap it at 200 because if you bring any more than 200, then it's just, you got so many buses and you can't get in and out easy. Um, and the, the, the price of this one is significantly less than the, Jan or I did it again, mm -hmm. November tour uh, for two reasons. One, we're, we're not staying at the King David the whole time on the February trip. And number two, um, the season, February is at least, uh, less expensive than, than uh, yeah. November. So everybody can go to Israel both times, or February if you haven't got the chance in the first one. Okay, let's talk about your prophetic word uh, from Jan June 16th, 2020. I have to read this. This is just, praise the Lord, this is just so incredible. So I'm just going to read it quick. I just wanted to put this on. But um, this points at what we were just talking about with the 2,000 mules. So I hope if anybody is watching for Dinesh D'Souza that they listen to this, because this is really interesting. So June 16th, 2020. The people of this country are restless. I am allowing the pressure to birth forth vision, to bring people into focus, to expose the agendas of the enemy, to make a clear choice for those lost in confusion. You will see miraculous jaw-dropping events occur to suddenly turn the narrative, to scatter the enemy's gangs, mules, and soldiers <laughs> as furious as they arise they shall fall and a double portion of that rage and fall faster than they ever arose says the lord of hosts this day it literally said mules mules yep to scatter the enemy's gangs mules and soldiers yeah, yeah. tell me that's not wild that's june 16th 2020 that's almost two years ago this word was given and if you see the movie which you got to see the movie you see the movie you see how well orga organized this whole thing was from A to Z of the corruption. He's right. <laughs> they, it was a lot of planning. They purposely only gave him five or six or seven at a time 
so that they couldn't be tracked and told them how to, as soon as there was an arrest in a certain city, the FBI was, or somebody was able to take the next thing you do, the very next day, they're using uh, gloves to put the- I just, um, I think it's more miraculous that it's, un it's unraveling during a liberal presidency. You see, when the Lord does something, it's unprecedented many times. And, and, and there's a, there's a, you know, a, uh, an air of, you know, you can't believe that this is how it's happening. And it's unraveling. Think about this during a liberal presidency, yep. which is even more amazing. Yep. But this is how the Lord works. So. Well, I was, I would, I, I rarely watch fake news, but I had fake news on one of the TVs on Sunday, I believe. It, and if you watch fake news, it's just, you're like, how can they continue to talk this this nonsense? Mm -hmm. um, it's they're, they're just they're lying to you. There's absolutely lying to you. Um, mm -hmm. But th they yeah. were talking about well, one of the experts. I, he was one of uh, Hillary Clinton's right hand in the polls, and what we see, uh, he has no chance. He has no chance. He said that, and never in, po in politics have I ever heard that say that he has no chance. They're going to have to replace him, and that's what he said. They're going to have to replace him. Openly said that. Wow. But they said, we don't have anybody to replace him with. Unless, well, yeah, because they can't pull Hillary out right now because of these lawsuits that are being filed. Hillary so, is in deep doo-doo. <laughs> yes. So they can't pull her out. And, and in a way, they're right. They don't have anybody yep. um, that they really could put up there that's, you know, that could truly, like, is charismatic and could win and is more moderate and... They don't have many of them. So what they're going to do is they're going to like they did. You have to have riots in the streets. You got to about the last leg, which is the Belmont stakes of this, because Rich Strike's going to be running in this. And I'm curious about the names of these other horses that come up, because this is wild. What's happened from last year, this year. So I don't know a lot about horse racing, but early voting since he won, would he be in this next one, too? Yes, he so would the, be both absolutely horses in racing? the next race. You know, it's kind of funny because my father when he was alive, worked, taught me a ton about horse racing. Now, the Lord is probably watching this going, how am I going to use this hot mess of what this is anything? And he did, and he's using it in this manner. So, yes, because he won that, he automatically is in that race. Wow. Well, so when, and now you got Rich Strike coming back for so, the Belmont. So I'm going to have to pay attention to this. W when is that race? Do you know when the oh, race is? Hold on. I'll, we'll, we'll look it up live here, yeah. and I'll tell you. For okay. everybody to know, mark your calendars for this. This is going to be very important. Okay, Belmont Stakes. I believe Bel is Belmont in Long Island. Why do I think the Belmont Stakes June eleventh? Wow. Um, and I'll tell you where are the Belmont Stakes. Maybe it's not Long Island. It might be a little farther um, north of the city than that. So, Belmont Stakes, um, Belmont Park in Elmont, New York. Okay, so Elmont, New York, I think is a little farther north okay not north of us i mean of the city fascinating so mm -hmm. it's gonna be it's gonna be a giddy up <clears throat> gonna be a giddy up yes uh, it is and uh people are, are are puzzled that they they kept rich strike out of this race but he said it was for the health of the horse they withheld him from the race it's so interesting that's what's being quoted and said and it's wild now how often does that happen that's rare, right? Hardly ever that they withhold the winner of the Kentucky Derby from racing in the Preakness unless the horse is injured. Now, Rich Strike wasn't injured. He's not injured at all. It was just, they said, for the health of the horse because the recovery time with racehorses, when they have to race a race like this, their recovery time can be a bit long. Mm -hmm. And so these races are boom, 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 two weeks apart each, which is a hard recovery time because how they get, you know, a lot of people ask, well, how do they get these racehorses all around the world and do this, like the, around the country? There is a special airline that flies these racehorses, and when they load them, it looks like a stall in there. They've got hay. They've got a personal attendant. They're put in their cross ties, and they're flown wow. around so this can be done. So by the time they have to fly them back and get them into recovery, and it, it can take weeks sometimes. And so basically... Um, you've got three races within, you know, six weeks hmm. that are heavy duty ones. Mm -hmm. Well, that's one to watch. It's coming. There's up. horse racing 101, everybody. <laughs> yeah, we're going to watch this one. Um, uh -huh. You there need was, to. There was also a uh, with monkeypox last year. 
Surprise, surprise. Surprise, Wuhan surprise. Wuhan is one of the epicenters, although it was being funded by others. Mm -hmm. um, but Wuhan is one of definitely the epicenters of all of this. Amazing. So. And the hate that we're seeing still about um, this Roe versus Wade is just absolutely just appalling. I'm trying to get to the to the point. What? Demons get mad when their power supply gets interfered with. I mean, you, this is as blatant as I can get with this. They get mad when their power supply is interfered with. Okay, so this woman, okay, I'm going to quote what she said. She, the, uh, she's MSNBC host Tiffany Cross uh, said, pro-life Americans. Maybe the Lord's going to visit Tiffany and make sure that, you know, she has a different point of view about wow. this. It's That's just... what I'm going to say. That's how deep and dark and the hatred is for life. Well, it, it is. And you know what I find comical about this? Her last name is Cross. <laughs> <laughs> Her last name is Cross. I mean, things. One of the things they would do is tear down their high places. Yep. So they couldn't do sacrifices, right? What this will do, it's going to start tearing them down. This interferes majorly with that power supply and with what very corrupted, demonic, horrific, blasphemous, but he knows that. Uh, and so this is getting interfered with for them, and they are just flipping their lid. I mean, they can't even contain themselves, which demons can anyway, but they've really, like, through people, gone off the deep end right now. Here's another one. This is an M NPR host, um, host of, M and I think NPR gets pu public funding by us taxpayers. I, I believe it used to be. I, I'm not sure if that is the same still. But she calls pro-life Americans white male supremacists. <laughs> Unbelievable. Who watches? Who, who reads this? But if you're pro-life, goes right down the tubes, that argument. Well, you see what they're trying to do. They're trying to create a white MAGA supremacist division. Yes to go out to riot in the streets, Roe versus Wade, another distraction yep. to dri la launch. I'm going to say this publicly, and, and I may have said this once before, but you need to do your research on uh, Miss Stanger and why Planned Parenthood was started, because it was originally mm. started to stop African Americans from reproducing. Yep. It was originally started to stop, do your research back as, as to how this was raised up um, and, and who raised uh, this, you know, organization up? Because you're going to find out a lot that surprises you. Yeah, she so is. So the white supremacist thing don't fly because that's not the reason all this was started. No, nope, it was the opposite. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, I, people, uh, I, I, knew, I knew somebody that met her and knew her and said, she's the most evil person I've ever met. Mm -hmm. I think her son even said that at one point. Um she fits in the uh, Klaus Schwab uh, bundle, just yes. sickness. One world, one world government, uh, bring down the, 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 the population of the world. Well, that's exactly what they want to do. And you know what? There is a lot of black and Latinos out there who are pro-life. Mm -hmm. Hate to tell them, mm -hmm. there's a significant, and it's growing by the day, of those groups that are pro-life and that are, you know, joining ranks and doing that. So, and that's a special, it was a special shout out to our brothers and sisters uh, that, of Catholic, that are Catholics because that the Catholics, you know, mm -hmm. they get a lot yes. of abuse of doing things wrong, but one of the great things they do right is that life, they've been strong on life. And I'm, yeah. I don't have the article in front of me, right, but we tweeted this out over the weekend. But there was a uh, bishop that came out over the weekend uh, of the Catholic Church and said Nancy Pelosi is not to get uh, communion in any Catholic church. Wow. And then oh, a they're bunch coming out of swinging priests now. came and supported him for saying that. That's awesome. Because it's true. Good for them. Yep. You can't it be a Catholic true. and be pro pro uh, pro choice, that or not. But uh, Nancy Pelosi, they, it came out over the weekend. It, well, if they've, that's the beginning of the avalanche there. So if they came out about her. Yep. They'll come out about others now. Yep. They're gonna, so they're gonna they're gonna come pour, pouring good out. Good for them for standing their ground on. Yeah, that. we have pray to pray for them. Yeah, we have to pray for them. Mm -hmm. You know, there are pray very few them. that. Um, uh, are coming out and being part of the remnant because they're afraid. 
Um, here's another article goes back to the, the Starbucks, which I, I can't stand Starbucks, and now this even makes it worse. Pro-lifers should never drink another Starbucks coffee again because it now pays. Well, well, let's go back here with Starbucks and that logo for a minute to maybe help people understand further. So their logo is a half person, half fish. Yep. Is Starbucks logo, correct? Yep, we got it up. If we go back to biblical times, there was a nation of people called the Philistines. And they had a false god called Dagon. Mm -hmm. And Dagon was half man, half fish. And they sacrificed humanly to this false god. Mm -hmm. And in fact, when they stole the Ark of the Covenant, the Philistines from Israel, and placed it in front, God threw Dagon on his face, broke his hands, broke his head off, and did everything else you can imagine, afflicted them with tumors and rats and all sorts of things till they gave the Ark and sent it back. Back, yep. Starbucks, I'm going to say this publicly, is in for a fall. They are in for a major, major fall right now. They are teetering on the edge of disaster. I'm going to say this publicly. So when it happens, you know, the, it's the Lord that is saying this. They're going to fall. Well, they're going to take a major hit. Howard Schultz, I believe it's Howard Schultz, was the founder of Starbucks. And he at one point was claiming he was a Christian and part of some Christian uh, thing that was out years ago that was more business than it was Christian. But anyway, he, he publicly said at a shareholder meeting that we, 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 we support Planned Parenthood. They give money to Planned Parenthood. Um, and if anybody has a problem with it, then don't be a shareholder at, at Starbucks. They're going to have problems with their shares, all right. Yep. They're going to have major problems with their shares. Because as the anger of the Lord got incensed against Dagon and the Philistines, so the anger of the Lord is going to be aroused and incensed against the entire Starbucks corporation. And that's just coming now, real time. I feel it in my spirit. I feel it strongly in my spirit, and that's coming. Yep. I never liked the coffee anyway. No, it's too strong. It is too strong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you like, like diesel. The, if you want to think of strong coffee, wait till Cater gives you a, a cup of coffee in Be the Bethlehem. <laughs> yep. My my my. All right, we we went through an hour, fifty three minutes already. Wow. Uh, it's 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 been fast. It always is fast on Monday. Um, anything else you want to talk about? Well. Let's think about this for a minute because there's so much happening right now. Um, that dream um, keeps coming to me too after what we talked about with Dr. Artis with um, when I had the dream, it was the two parts and you know who I saw sitting down to the end of the aisle and they parted. And then there was this big white screen and it looked like a fighter jet from the Tuskegee Airmen, if you remember, I specifically oh, yeah. said that. Um, and Al and Al I think it was Alabama was the first one as vote. Okay. So that went, once he said that to me, um, that's something, um, that I think we're going to see transpire more and more. I don't remember exactly what he said about the Tuskegee airmen, but he, Oh, he said, it's exactly what they did to the Tuskegee airmen they're doing now. Hmm. So Alabama may find themselves embroiled in the middle of this also. Yeah. There's a lot going on. We got we got some serious uh, action going on in Georgia, and we got some serious action going on in Arizona with them. Um, mm -hmm. These 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 raids of these nonprofits. I uh, would watch Lebanon right now too. That's funny you said that because uh, that's what the colonel said on his glory. The Lord showed me that today. You know how he showed me through going back to the Kentucky Derby last year. And when Medina Spirit was stripped of his title, a horse by the name of Mandaloon, who came in second, was given that title. Mandaloon is um, a Lebanese, wait, I have it here. It's a, let me hear, let me get it up here. So I can say it really uh, fast here. Okay. Oh, it's a, a mullioned window and an element of the traditional architecture of Lebanon. Hmm. So... Medina Spirit was yanked, and Mandaloon is given the victory, and it's of, uh, you know, Lebanese origin. Oh. The name of this horse, potentially the owners, too. And when I saw that, something struck me, and I went, we have to watch Lebanon right now. Well, that just brought something to my attention. I don't know if this is public yet or not, um, but 
a, a highly rated, uh, ranked uh, Iranian uh, general close to the Ayatollah was taken out over the weekend. Wait a second, that was in a prophecy. Yes. I have to find that prophecy. Yes. I, because immediately the Ayatollah when I heard that, will be struck. Even immediately when I heard that, I was like, that wasn't one of Amanda's prophecies. Oh my. Yep. It was taken out in, I believe, in Syria. Was it Syria? I think it was Syria. Oh my goodness gracious. He was second to Sol Soleimani that was taken out by the oh. Lebanon is is uh, a concern to the to, to the Israeli uh, uh, IDF. That's what the colonel was talking about. Israeli colonel on his glory on Thursday brought up Lebanon. I had no clue. Yep. I did not see that. So when I had seen this this morning, the Lord just brought to my attention about Lebanon, and I thought I have to remember to say this today. Mm -hmm. Yep. They're trying to destroy Israel on all sides. It's literally the psalm and uh, ties to the Philistines, oh, and too. With a couple minutes left, I have to show. Oh, yeah, your, your spy kit. <laughs> Jackie <laughs> sent the spy tech periscope that I spoke of that we helped stop the rod, that man from uh, getting robbed at knife point. <laughs> Me and my bow at work. So we were crouching beneath the wall and we had this part up and we could see the robbery and everything that was transpiring without them knowing we were there. So how, do, so how does that spy kit work? Okay, so basically it's a periscope. Okay. So you have a mirror down here and you have a mirror up here. And the mirror down here is going to reflect. So you're seeing, so I could actually look through it and see you. Oh. Because what's up here is reflecting in this mirror, basically. And I'm looking into this mirror and I'm seeing it. So this is what helped stop <laughs> that robbery. A robbery. It's like 11. Yep. So thank you, Jackie. That's amazing that they found it. So... See, we all can do our part, even at a young age. <laughs> well, how old were you? Seven? Eleven. Eleven. Eleven Around years old. eleven years old. And 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 uh, we had the spy kit ready. You ha literally had the spy kit? Yes, we had the spy kit with us. We were tooling around in the playground, and all of a sudden, I see the guy in a headlock across the street at the mobile station at knife point, and we're going, what do we do? We have to help this guy. Like, literally, this is what's going on, and we're, like, talking about really fast what we can do. So we ducked, and we put the periscope up. And then we decided between us that because Paul was on the fourth floor and I was on the sixth floor, that he could get to his mom quicker. So there was a big wall and he yells to me, cover me. And he jumps over the wall. I'm thinking, what am I covering you with? <laughs> Too much watching of the A-team back then. So anyway, he runs and he get his mom calls immediately. And all of a sudden we see these slew of cop cars surround mobile. We're watching this real time. Like it was wild. So the cops commended us for our bravery. And you know what I mean? Like what we did, we helped save that guy's life. The guy that came in was a disgruntled employee that had been fired and he was drunk. And that's when my parents, because they were still married at the time, said, time to move. Amanda has just helped witness and stop a robbery. We need to move. <laughs> See, that's, that's, that's what happened. That's the importance of being prepared, right? Because you if you yes. hadn't had the spy kit, you wouldn't have got it. I know. I, I was doing strange things like this, even at a young age. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so, interestingly enough. Oh, Amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Mm -hmm. All right, that's it. That's that's an hour, or hour of grace mm -hmm. and glory on Monday. Um, would you like to close us in uh, close us out? Sure. Yes. Father God, in the precious name of your son, Jesus Christ, we come before you. We praise you that you are God and you are high and lifted up every power, principality and might. You are far above them, Father God. We give you all the glory, honor and praise Do your name. Father, we just ask that we become less so you become more in our lives acknowledging that your son yeshua hamashiach was all the god we praise you he miraculously rose again in three days and sent it back into heaven and took his rightful place at the right hand of the father where he rules and reigns forevermore lord we just praise you father god that during this time father god of what we see in the shaking and what goes on that we ourselves are not shaken father god because we are under your feathers under your wings we are taking refuge according to psalm 91 thank you father god you are delivering your people 
from the snare of the fowler and the protecting us father give your people father god right now brilliant ideas lord that are going to help others during this time brilliant ways father god to find what is needed to stock up to cultivate father god to do these things during this time as a testimony to those in the world that you are god and there is no other lord we just ask you to continue to order our steps in jesus name fill us with all wisdom counsel my power and the reverential fear of the lord lord we praise you and we thank you Father God, we just ask for a supernatural touch from you, Lord, that you re that you recharge us, you re-strengthen us, you help us to continue to endure and run the race that is set before us. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen and amen. 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 All right. If I happen to get out on the tractor again th uh, this week, I will have Creed take a picture. Oh, have Creed film it, please. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I want footage. He's okay. He's okay with it now because he can come and rescue. Re he likes rescuing me now that he can drive the Gator. So it all works out. <laughs> oh, Creed. All yes. right. Happy Monday to you, my sister. Give Happy Chris, Monday, brother. Uh, our love. Yes, I will. All right. I will. God bless you. And this uh, go in God's shalom.